coming closer. They're coming right at me. Moving off. I'm at maximum speed. They're going away. They're gone. I can't see them. Red Dog 1 to Washington Control. I've been given permission to return to base. Over. Washington Control to Red Dog 1. Roger. Out. At 6 a.m. that same morning, I called Lieutenant William Patterson, the pilot of Red Dog 1, who had made visual contact with the unknowns. He could add nothing more to what he had reported to us over the intercom. Later that same morning, the White House placed a call to the Pentagon. Captain Rupelt, who had flown in from Wright-Patterson and who was only beginning his analysis of the sighting, got the call from the White House. Yes, sir. It appears to have been caused by temperature inversion. Yes, sir. We've had cases where radar blips have been caused by temperature inversion. This was Captain Rupelt's report to President Truman. But Captain Rupelt had not been present at the Washington sighting. It wasn't until later that he learned there had been both visual and radar contact with the unknowns on that night. On Monday morning, an avalanche of calls from newspapers throughout the nation jammed the trunk lines at the Pentagon. The relentless pressure continued. We admitted radar contacts from the three surrounding airfields. When did the saucers first appear? 9 p.m. How long were they under observation? Six hours. How many were there? 14. Could the pilots see any details? No. which appeared in the Washington Times Herald, Lieutenant Patterson, pilot of Red Dog One, said he concentrated on one of the bright lights, but it outran him. I tried to make contact with the bogies below 1,000 feet, Patterson said. I saw several bright lights. I chased a single bright light. I was at my maximum speed. I ceased chasing it because I saw no chance of overtaking it. Under the insistent demands from the nation's press and the accumulating pressure of the public, the chief of staff set up a press conference at the Pentagon. I was present when General Sanford spoke for the newsreel cameras. The Air Force interest in this problem has been due to our feeling of an obligation to identify and analyze to the best of our ability anything in the air that may have the possibility of threat or menace to the United States. In pursuit of this obligation since 1947, we have received and analyzed between one and 2,000 reports that have come to us from all kinds of sources. Of this great mass of reports, we have been able adequately to explain the great bulk of them, explain them to our own satisfaction. We've been able to explain them as uh, hoaxes, as erroneously identified friendly aircraft, as meteorological or electronic phenomena or as light aberration. However, there have been a certain percentage of this volume of reports that have been made by credible observers of relatively incredible things. It is this group of observations that we now are attempting to resolve. We have, as of date, come to only one firm conclusion with respect to this remaining percentage. And that is that it does not contain any pattern of purpose or of consistency that we can relate with any, to any conceivable threat to the United States. 
we can say that the recent sightings are in no way connected with any secret development by any agency of the United States. When I left the Pentagon that evening, General Sanford's words kept running through my mind. Credible observers of relatively incredible things. The theories of the skeptics could not stand up to the actual experiences of high-ranking military personnel, radar experts, airline pilots, and other responsible witnesses referred to by General Sanford as credible observers. I started to walk through the streets of Washington, the words remaining with me, credible observers of relatively incredible things. I recalled when I first joined the project at AMC, how I regarded with disbelief the whole subject of flying saucers. But piece by piece, the evidence had crystallized. Until now, in my opinion, there was no doubt as to their existence. Now, so far as I was concerned, it was no longer a question of whether or not there were unknown objects flying in our atmosphere. For me, the only questions that remained were, what are these objects? Where do they come from? To me, the evidence indicated intelligence behind their control, and by now the belief that their source was interplanetary was no longer incredible. <laughs>